All right, so I wanted to do this video primarily because a little while back, I did a video ranking locking mechanisms from sturdiness to ease of use to intuit intuition or intuitivity, I guess you could say. Maybe I'm making up a word as I usually do, but basically like how intuitive it is to use a specific locking mechanism for someone who doesn't understand knives. And these are are all different locking mechanisms that I think are really good and very easy and safe to use. So therefore, I think you could hand them pretty well to most non-knife people and they would be reasonably successful. Now, in this video, like I said, most of the locking mechanisms I'm gonna talk about are pretty intuitive and how I judge that and pretty intuitive and safe. And how I judge that is a few things. One, how easy is the lock to use? How easy is it to find? Like, is it something that you could notice? Like looking at this knife, if you didn't know it, could you find the lock, right? And then secondly, or maybe even thirdly, is how safe is that lock to use? So on a lot of knives, what we actually don't think of as knife people, a lot of times we are putting our fingers in harm's way when we go to close a knife, right? But there are some locking mechanisms out there where to close the lock, it actually requires you to remove your hands, or at least your hands would be very awkwardly positioned if they were in front of the blade as it was closing. So that being said, these are knives that fit those definitions really well. So let's jump into it. So first off, I know a lot of people have gone over some of these locking mechanisms, but I think one that is often missed and is pretty new is the shark lock. This is an Andrew Demko special uh, patented lock by him himself, and his company is like the only one that has licensing to use it. But the shark lock is, I don't know, it's a, it's a kind of hard lock to describe as it's basically an amalgamation of the triad lock, the lock back, and if you made those two one-handed friendly. So a lot of times with a lock back of some sort, you press into the like handle, the rear of the handle to collapse the blade, right? But with the shark lock, because the locking mechanism actually protrudes, you can access it with one hand, right? So to close this, you can actually, you know, access this and unlock it. So anyways, I think that this is not only a very intuitive lock because the locking mechanism literally protrudes out of the handle design, as you can see in the back there. There. But also what I like is that in the open position, it requires your hands basically to move out of the way of the closing blade. So it is pretty hard, though I mean you could potentially botch it, right? But overall, most intuition is going to say that you are going to put your thumb here, your four fingers here, sorry, three fingers here, and then one on that lock. So this is the first one up, and I think this one's probably the least user-friendly, the least noticeable, because it can blend in, but uh, overall, it's pretty safe and pretty easy to use. So that is the Andrew Demko Shark Lock, and this, of course, is an 80-20.5 in specific. So anyways, that is the first lock. All right, next one up is not so much of a lock as much as it is flipper knives in general. Now, frame locks are not my favorite, but when it comes to flippers, I think flippers actually make most knives that might be a little bit on the less safe side more safe because of that flipper. So what I mean by this is even if I'm going to try to cut myself, this flipper tab right here literally prevents that, forces me to move my thumb out of the way to close the knife the rest of the way. In addition to, once again, the intuition of like, how do I open this? How do I, you know, get this blade open? Well, there's this big tab on the back. You can push it and the knife will fly out. So this is in particular a frame lock, but I think flipper knives are pretty darn safe and pretty intuitive to figure out how to use how to open and how to close. Next up to that is going to be the liner lock. And the liner lock, I think, is one of those that is a little bit more unsafe, but is overall pretty safe and fairly intuitive to figure out. It kind of depends more on the design. I really do like these Emersons because Emerson, I think, does it right. You can see that there is a lot of space to see the liner and to close the liner. It's very easy to close one-handed, as I ironically struggled this one time, but uh, it's very easy to close one-handed. I think the only thing you have to watch out for is, as I've mentioned, there's no flipper tab, there's nothing to really protect you here, so you can close this on your finger, right? Um, so that's what kind of gives it a downside and why it's a little bit lower on the 
list. So these next three that I'm gonna get into, I think are probably just about perfect when it comes to knives that are safe to hand to friends, they're super intuitive to use, super easy to use, and once again, most importantly, they really do drive that moving your hands out of the way of the blade to close them. So the first one up is going to be the ball bearing lock or the ball lock. This one is a bit of an old school lock and honestly, unfortunately, not too many companies use this. I think just about the only one is Spyderco and realistically, they just about only use it on the Manix. They have had different versions in the past, but for the most part, you really only see it on the Manix 2, the Manix 2 XL, and just the Manix family. However, this one is very similar to the Axis Lock, so it has a lot of the benefits of the Axis Lock. It's just a little bit different. The only thing I dislike, and once again, it's very intuitive that you're going to put your hands like this to get the blade to close, but the spring on these uh, ball bearing locks tends to be kind of hard to pull back, so for someone who doesn't know what to expect they it might catch them off guard however once again this is something that's very intuitive to use and uh, i think overall you know most people are going to be like they're going to see this big hole they're going to use this hole to open it and then they're going to figure out that they need to press this piston or to press that piston back to close it now of course i make it look a lot more smooth than someone who's brand new to knives but i think it's pretty easy to figure out Next one up is going to be the compression lock. The compression lock is one that is once again patented by Spyderco and is pretty universally used by Spyderco in many, many different iterations. Of course, the whole paramilitary para family use the compression lock itself. And there are many others like the Shaman, uh, the Native series that all use the compression lock. Tons of knives from Spyderco do. And this is one that once again is very much, you know, like if you are going to close it, you're going to need to put your finger back here to drop that liner. So you're probably not going to have your fingers where that blade closes. So very safe, and once again, I think it's pretty intuitive. I can't speak for everyone. Maybe someone wouldn't get how to do this, but being that there is a you know, milled out recession here and that you can see this bright, shiny tab right here. Some people even put, um, like you can get little like G10 bits on this to give you some extra grip and for it to protrude just a little more. Uh, I've personally never needed it, but that would make it even obvious or even more obvious that that's how you close it. So I think it's pretty intuitive to use. Once again, how it's designed to use really gets your fingers out of the way of the blade. All right, last one up is the Axis Lock. Um, now this is, it, the patent for the Axis Lock has officially ended, so you see many different iterations of this, such as the Able Lock from Hogue, but essentially they're all just Axis Locks or Crossbar Locks, whatever you'd like to say. But this one is one that, once again, very similar to the Ball Lock or Ball Bearing Lock. You have this uh, locking bar that you're going to have to pull back. And usually, I mean, you could do it with one finger, but most of the time, so most people are going to put their thumb and their index finger up there on that crossbar to pull it back and if you do that it moves your hand really out of the way of the blade when it closes and this is one that i think is very intuitive for most people um, you know when they're opening it of course once again i'm very experienced with knives so i'm going to make it look a lot more easier than someone who's never handled a knife but this is one that's pretty easy to figure out and pretty safe to use so these are blades and primarily locking mechanisms that I would hand to a friend to someone who's not an experienced knife person and I think that they could figure it out and I should say I should note all of these um, because I always get questions like hey what knife was that what knife is this so of course this was the 8020.5 this is the Emerson mini commander this is the Rick Hinderer XM18 3.5 this is the Manix 2 this is the paramilitary two, and this is the Hogue Deca. Now, like I said, you can find all of these locks in different knives throughout different um, companies, but these are just the ones that I have in particular to showcase these locking mechanisms. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was fun to watch, and hopefully you learned a thing or two about knives that are super user-friendly. And yeah, as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.